Good morning, folks. We're starting by remembering just how small we are. Filament snaking in is hundreds of thousands of kilometers long. The sunspot's umbral fields you see to the left of the Earth scale belong to a terrifyingly huge Earth spot. Could be the greatest test of the Earth-facing solar quiet of the year. We're going to check in on those spots, look at some crazy weather that's been happening across the globe, and we're going to dot the eyes on a story we broke in yesterday's episode of Fly on the Wall, one of the more incredible news releases in a while. An object has been found at the far reaches of our solar system, and scientists cannot believe it went unnoticed for so long. They say smart money is on a super Earth around 300 AU, or on our binary star, a super cool brown dwarf marching through our very own Oort cloud. But first, we're here at spaceweathernews.com to find the last 24 hours on our star relatively calm. We are starting to see solar flaring on the rise with the flashes there, still just in higher C range, but that could break higher soon. The sunspots we've seen are puny compared to these incomers up north. That's a hefty one visible now, but behind it are even bigger ones. Time to start really paying attention. You can see that the solar wind died down last night. Corona whole stream ends without having done too much geomagnetically, but that polarity switch is nigh with the dark opening facing Earth now being negative and setting its stream to impact us tomorrow night. Folks, when we think of interesting celestial objects, you think of ones we can see and the ones that play a role in popular phenomenon. This cannot be seen with nearly all of our telescopes. It is of fairly solid size, but super cool, especially if it is truly a brown dwarf. Conspiracy theorists may love this story because it truly confirms the vast population of objects nearby to our system, but this thing also isn't intruding into our inner system anytime soon, at least not like most people think of Planet X. This object appears to be in the outer reaches of our system, and the implications are truly astounding. We'll discuss this more in a moment. First, we're in the south central United States where the tornadoes came indeed, hoping everyone heeded the warnings and as well. Unfortunately, there was considerable damage in the localities directly hit by the storms. It's looking like the front in the Gulf states switches to a rainmaker mostly by tonight, with the northwest states continuing to be on the receiving end of day after day of convergence-driven storms. Not to be outdone in the southwest Pacific, that storm rolling through Australia and New Zealand dropped a twister of its own the last couple hours. I can state definitively that the cojones on those animals are more impressive than mine. I'd be running. For those in the flood-hit zones of Europe, take the next couple hours to breathe. That next system is just offshore, coming in over the next day. Everyone else here just enjoy the high pressure. Back to this. Folks, an object with extraordinary proper motion has been spotted in the sky next to our closest star system. Problem is, it's not in that star system. It's in ours. The dulling of the background light by the Centauri system undoubtedly helped scientists spot the furthest object in our system, at least that we know of. It could be a very small trans-Neptunian object, but they think that's unlikely because we're just finding it now. Many of their techniques suggest that this is a super-Earth about 10 times farther away than Neptune, which would be very interesting, or that this is indeed our planet's binary, or one of them, because a brown dwarf star is a very possible characterization of this object. It is contained within our heliosphere, living right in here with us, and the most interesting thing is that it cannot be seen in infrared. It is in lockdown mode, so to speak, super cooled, a total game changer. And before we go any further, that is indeed the 2013 animation we had from the Star Water series. It was in that series back in 2013 when we hypothesized the existence of objects like these and thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of similar ones in and beyond the Kuiper mass. However, this particular story, as mentioned before, was detailed at the end of yesterday's Fly on the Wall upload. Our system has thousands of planets and maybe even a few dozen dwarf stars, and this has huge implications for one of my talks at the Pittsburgh conference, A Planet Crossed, detailing Scholl's star system breaking through our solar system 70,000 years ago. See Starwater, listen to Fly on the Wall, catch up with everything by becoming a member at suspiciousobservers.org. And, in case you forgot, those Pittsburgh conference videos are going to be coming to the website as well in 2016. Also, less than 50 days till we wrap up the initial one-two punch of the show. Today's conditions detail the temperature and storm factors for those U.S. tornadoes last night. Plus, we've got shots of our star to close. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear.
Be safe, everyone.